I'm Jian Jinchuan from ICSI. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, the, this paper is a joint work by Tsinghua University, UT Donors, and uh, ICSI. Uh, the other authors uh, cannot come here because of the coronavirus in China. So uh, this talk is about uh, CDN attacks. Uh, CDN is an important internet infrastructure. It is designed to improve website performance and security, such as uh, DOS defense. Uh, today, many popular websites are deployed behind the CDN. Uh, but the CDN itself can also be uh, vulnerable, can introduce security issues. Uh, we, our study found that some CDN forwarding features can be abused to break its DOS protection. Uh, here is how CDN forwarding works. First, a client request is directed to a CDN server, and the CDN forwarded to the uh, origin. So in this scenario, the end-to-end -end collection between the client and the origin is broken into front-end and back-end collection. Uh, recently, a number of research CDN-related attacks uh, arise from uh, different forwarding stages. Uh, first, the many researchers study uh, front-end collection security, such as HPS, uh, private key sharing issues, CDN cache poisoning attacks. And uh, CDN itself can also be vulnerable. Researchers also found uh, uh, forwarding loop attacks that can attack one CDN with another CDN. And uh, in the back-end, uh, researchers found the asymmetric collection can be used to attack the origin. And uh, researchers also study the Orangin IP exposure to bypass the CDN protection. So this work, uh, we focus on the backend collection, uh, how to use CDN forwarding features to attack the Orangin. Uh, we found three types of attacks, ATP2, amplification attack, pre-post, slow ATP attack, and the egress IP blocking attack. And we evaluate this three attack on three CDNs. Uh, this talk will only cover the first and the third one because of time constraints. Uh, let's look at the first one. Uh, HTTP2 is a new standard released in 2015. Uh, it is designed to improve HTTP performance. Compared with HTTP1, uh, it has two big optimizations. The first optimization is the compression. HTTP2 uh, uh, introduced battery protocol and HPAC had the compression to reduce the header redundancy. The second one is collection reuse. HTTP2 introduced multiplex streams to reduce TCP collections. Our attacks exploit these two optimizations. The general idea about this attack is that when the front end collection uses HTTP2 and the back end collection uses HTTP1, so CDN leads to convert small compressed HTTP2 streams into large HTTP1 requests, which can cause a bandwidth amplification attack. So this idea is first proposed by Beckett in ESD17. They studied this attack in their local proxies, but they didn't measure and evaluate this attack in the real world. So our study is based on their, uh, their attack. Uh, we found that the amplification attack can also work on CDN. And we improve this attack by uh, using uh, Huffman encoding feature. And, and we perform the real world measurement and evaluation. Uh, we measured six popular CDNs and found all of them support HTTP2 in the front end collection. And only support HTTP1 for the back end collection. That means the protocol convention will happen in all the CDNs. Uh, which can, can be abused. Uh, next, we describe three detailed attack techniques. Uh, the first technique is a static table. A static table is designed to index common header fields. Uh, when sending an ADB2 request, uh, a client first look up the table and then send the index value of the table rather than draw value. For example, in this case, the get method can be encoded as a two. So in this way, a 49-byte string can be coded as 11 bytes. The bytes here are just serial numbers that don't mean the actual bytes in the network. So uh, using the static table, uh, attacker can send the encoded HTTP2 streams to the CDN, and the CDN 
decode the request into large ATP1 request. So the attacker's traffic is amplified. The second technique is dynamic table. Uh, dynamic table is designed to index the previously seen headers to avoid a repeat transmission. It works in two steps. First, when a new header is transmitted for the first time, it will be inserted into the dynamic table. Second, in the following requests, the sender only needs to send, it, send the index value. Uh, using the dynamic table, uh, the attacker can first send a header with big headers, and then send many small requests that reference that big header. So uh, the CDN, when the CDN forwarding these, these requests to the origin, uh, they, he will decode all the uh, small requests into large ATP1 requests. The third technique is uh, Huffman encoding. ATP2 defines some special characters uh, can have shorter encoding. For example, the Huffman encoding of X is 8 bits in length, but uh, the character A only needs 5 bits. So an attacker can replace X with A to achieve higher compression. Uh, here's a detailed comparison between X and A. Uh, we can see that A have higher uh, amplification factors than X. Uh, to evaluate this attack, we uh, performed uh, ex experiments on the six CDNs. Uh, we send HP2 uh, streams in the front end collection, and we record HP1 traffic on our origin. Uh, we can see that the amplification Amplification factor grows with the number of concurrent streams. Uh, the decrease is because CDN has limitation on maximal uh, concurrent streams. Uh, when the stream number exceeds that limitation, uh, the backend traffic doesn't increase, so the amplification factor decreases. And we, in the six CDN, we tested uh, two CDN support 100 maximum. A stream and uh, three CDN support 128, and Cloudflare supports uh, 256. Uh, compared with the previous work, our attacks can achieve better uh, amplification factor. Uh, we found uh, AB2 convention can also be used for collection amplification fact attack. Uh, attacker. Uh, send multiple streams in one ATP2 collection, and the CDN will open 100 or more collections to the origin. So this technique can be used to uh, exhaust the collection resource on the origin. Uh, you can find the detail about this attack in the paper. Uh, another attack is uh, egress IP blocking attack. Uh, this attack is to abuse a feature called origin shield. Uh, origin shield is to add a cache layer, another cache layer between the CDN edge server and the origin. Uh, this design has many benefits. For example, it can reduce uh, the backend collections and reduce the origin workload. Uh, it can also improve website performance, but it, this design can also introduce security issues. Uh, the problem is that uh, the attacker only needs to block one or a small set of the egress IP address. Uh, he can effect the global request to the website. Uh, to evaluate this attack, we first measured the CDN IP distribution and then performed a real world experiments to demonstrate. Uh, is the practicality. Uh, from our measurements, we uh, have two observations. The first one is that CDN have a thousand, hundreds of thousands of ingress IP address, but their egress IP address are much fewer. The second observation is that uh, CDN egress IP address churning rates is low. For example, in max CDN, uh, 96% of the backend collections 
comes from the same uh, egress IP address. Uh, these two observations uh, confirms with a recent published paper in ICMP19, uh, which also measured the uh, CDN egress IP di distribution. Uh, we, to, to evaluate this attack, we first uh, uh, conducted experiments on Mac CDN. Uh, we set up a website on the Mac CDN. And at our zero, uh, we can access the website successfully from global ingress IP address. So the successful accessing ratio is 100%. Uh, starting from our one, uh, we block uh, one egress IP address. And uh, we found that only 10% of the request can access the, web the website, just blocking one IP address. <coughs> so to fur further illustrate uh, this threat in the real world, uh, we conducted experiments on Mac CDN by using uh, censorship IP blocking. Uh, as shown in the figure, uh, the censorship or the grid firewall of China is located between the uh, uh, egress IP and the origin. Uh, the attacker can send a request with uh, censored bad words to the CDN, and the censorship will inspect the backend collection and block this IP pair for 19 seconds. Then within this 19 seconds, the other users uh, try to access the website, their normal request will be blocked as well. Uh, so th this is just uh, one case demonstrates uh, how weak the weakness of the backend collection. Actually, as, as in practice, attacker can use uh, techniques like cross fire to interrupt the backend collection. Uh, to mitigate the HB2 amplification fact attack, uh, CDN should support HB2 uh, for the backend collection to, re to avoid a protocol convention. Uh, to mitigate the egress IP bl blocking attack, uh, CDN should apply unpredictable egress IP tuning strategy. Uh, another mitigation CDN could implement is uh, uh, rate limiting. For example, CDN could uh, monitor the backend uh, traffic or backend collections. Uh, we reported uh, these attacks to all the CDNs, and uh, some CDNs like Cloudflare and uh, Fastly uh, confirmed our report and gave us some rewards. Uh, so uh, in summary, uh, we conducted a security study on CDN uh, backend collection and found three attacks that abuse CDN features. And we evaluated this attack on three CDNs and received uh, some positive feedbacks. Uh, so that's all about this talk. Thank you. Were they nice t shirts? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's a no comment. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, so so I, I have a question for you, yeah. uh, and if you wouldn't mind repeating it on the microphone. Um, yeah. So um, have, you, do, have you seen any evidence that these kinds of attacks are being exploited in the wild? Uh, in, in our c communication with the CDN vendors, uh, I think uh, they didn't tell us such attacks has been abused. Yeah, uh, but uh, I'm not 100% about that because I'm not the major contributor to this work. Yeah, so I need to confirm it with the first two authors. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take our.